Okay, let's go to the slides. Hi, everybody. Uh, Doug Makishima here, MEF advisor, uh, also Linux Foundation Chimera End User Council and Technical Steering Committee. Uh, you can also find me in industry uh, doing work for both EcoBlox and Summit Tech. Uh, welcome to Mobile Evolution, Network as a Service APIs, Edge Computing, and Open Standards with a focus on, on APIs today and how uh, APIs are going to impact uh, wholesale. And first, thanks, thanks to Nasia for that great panel on uh, on IoT. Um, I really wish I could have been a part of that one, but I have this one to moderate and, and a great panel uh, lined up here to talk about this topic. But just carrying on from the, the conversation that we just tuned into, uh, I think Jimmy Jones from Zeriot uh, talked about the need for the same language in telco. And I think uh, what we're going to be talking about today, uh, network as a service and uh, network APIs, potentially is that common language that we can all speak, that the operators can speak, uh, the, the uh, developers, uh, enterprises, and uh, um, aggregators alike. So let's, let's get into it. First of all, um, we have a great panel. We have one operator and three vendors, uh, two aggregators and a, a newcomer to the market. And I will ask the, my panelists to introduce themselves uh, and what their companies are doing in, uh, in operator APIs. Uh, but first, I'll go through a, a brief introduction to set the stage and talk about what, uh, what network APIs are all about. So um, the first thing I'll say is that, that we have a new working group uh, in MEF called Mobile Evolution. Uh, where, where, where APIs live today. So uh, the scope uh, includes these APIs as well as uh, edge computing and open standards. But basically, we're looking at how mobile operators are transforming their networks into open standardized network as a service or NAS platforms, enabling new applications and further accelerating digital transformation. So what's happening is networks operators are exposing their network services externally to enterprises and app developers enabling new services, but also improving the user experience and security for existing applications. So highlighted here in the circle are telco APIs, uh, APIs such as quality on, on demand, device location, number verification, SIM swap. These are the, the APIs that we'll be talking about today in this, uh, in this session. So uh, a lot of this is driven through the GSMA initiative called Open Gateway, which they uh, explain as a common glue between cloud infrastructure and earth networks. So between the ground and the cloud, everything in between, um, and having standardized set of APIs uh, and then standardization by coding. So um, not the same type of um, typical uh, standardization you typically see in, 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 um, in uh, operators where you have a 100, 200 page document and everyone's left to interpret these documents um, uh, and you get a lot of uh, fragmentation and interoperability issues, but this is actual coding to implement these APIs to, to get it right the first time. There's also a certification process uh, that GSMA is driving um, for these APIs, and they've handed it off to uh, Linux Foundation Chimera to actually implement the, the APIs. But first, um, let's talk about some adoption. So, 47 operator groups representing 239 operator networks have signed an, an MOU. So there's broad support for these APIs. Uh, there's a lot of market data now on adoption as well. And I'm sure the panelists will talk about how these APIs are being adopted uh, globally. So Chimera, again, it's um, the, from the Linux Foundation. It's an initiative to actually develop the APIs as code. Um, and that way, uh, all anybody who's implementing it, whether it's the operators implementing it in their network to expose services or developers developing on top of these APIs, um, we should see a very, very uh, smooth implementation without the typical fragmentation interoperability issues that you that you would see. And it's an industry-wide uh, group and initiative here. Uh, many companies are participating across the whole ecosystem. So I think there's a great confidence that that the APIs we're seeing here um, will be uh, well uh, established in terms of standardization uh, with common ground, common language, and um, and the implementation will be such that it's it's ready to go right out of the right out of the shoot, right out of the box. So currently there are 22, 23 API families. Um, I'm not going to go into all of these in detail. The, the slides will be available um, afterwards in the archive. 
but it really does represent a, a cross-section of operator functions that these operators, again, they're, they're taking their network functions and exposing it externally through these APIs. So some of them are network stats or network information. Some APIs actually allow you to control the network, such as quality on demand. So if you have an application that's bandwidth or latency sensitive, you can actually request a higher quality of service uh, on demand, kind of a push to boost button for your application. Um, so we'll get into, into some of these APIs uh, as we move forward here, but I just wanted to highlight a couple case studies uh, from two of the my panelists. This one is uh, from Orange, um, touting their support for these Chimera and Open Gateway APIs. Um, again, in my industry work um, with Summit Tech earlier in the year at Mobile World Congress Barcelona, we did a, a joint POC with, uh, with Orange and had that demoed in their booth where we had a QOD on display. So um, Summit Tech has a, a 360 live streaming application that obviously is, is bandwidth and latency sensitive. So the, the QOD uh, API allows um, the, the customer in our case, the, uh, the app developer, which is Summit Tech, and then whoever's broadcasting their 360 video to have a higher quality of demand, quality of service on demand uh, experience for the duration of that, that live video stream. The next example here, is uh, from InfoBip, and uh, earlier in the year, they completed a commercial pilot in Brazil. So I think one of the things you'll see is it's really key not to have all 22 or 23 APIs live, but at least one or maybe a handful related to the same functionality uh, live at a certain percentage rate. Some say it's 60%, some say it's just the number of operators. Um, but in this case, we had the uh, three major operators in, in Brazil, all uh, aligned and launching at the same time with uh, InfoBip providing the aggregation and um, the API exposure. So I'm sure uh, Ivan will, will talk more about this. So let me uh, bring forward the, the panelists. So I've asked each of the panelists to introduce themselves, just a two minute uh, introduction of who they are for and what their company is, uh, is doing in the API space. So let's bring up Cedric first. From Orange. So, hello, hi everyone. So I'm in charge of the business strategy and channel management for the API program of Orange after more than 10 years in the wholesale business for Orange and then managing the relationship with the different actors uh, of the API uh, space. And maybe Cedric, uh, just a quick uh, intro on, on what Orange is doing in the API space sure. relevant to, uh, to, to wholesale. Sure. So we are developing these uh, new uh, API programs for following the, uh, as you say, the MOU uh, at the G, uh, GSMA Mobile World Congress to enable the so, camera uh, API for the whole group of Orange, uh, providing acting as an aggregator for the uh, different uh, Orange app calls and to provide uh, uh, the best experience to developers, uh, hyperscalers, and aggregators. Of course. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Cedric. Uh, Ivan from InfoBit, please come to the stage. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Ivan, Chief Business Officer of InfoBip. I oversee our strategy, go-to-market strategy, uh, sales, marketing, partnerships, and developer community globally. And um, uh, it, when it comes to InfoBip, what do we do with network APIs? Um, in the network layer, we have a partnership with Nokia, and we are trying to uh, activate as many telcos um, possible to um, uh, light up the network, the whole catalog of network APIs. And then when it comes to more um, API layer, of course, we are exposing this either uh, we'll try to our self-service to developer community or to businesses. And then finally, more in the enterprise layer, we're actually uh, working with number of enterprise to define uh, and pilot business uh, useful um, use cases ranging from on simple things that are replacement of existing um, uh, applications or use cases like authentication to much more complex that will go into engagement layer, something like location-based marketing and things like that. So it's a pretty comprehensive approach, but I mean, we are still in incubation phase um, in my point of view. Great, thanks. Thanks, Ivan. Uh, next, uh, Lee from Cinch. Hi, folks. Lee from Cinch. I'm a product owner at Cinch. I look after, um, you know, authentication, number intelligence, and identity uh, products. 
I sit, I, I, my responsibility is sit at the developer experience level where we're opening up APIs for developers to use to access you know, all communication services across voice, messaging and identity. Um, just by way of background, so I've been sort of in this mobile identity space for the last 10 years, time flies. <laughs> Uh, background in you know, cryptography, PKI consulting, and identity and access management. And Lee, tell us what Cinch is doing in uh, Telco APIs. So, you know, Cinch is known as a CPaaS leader. Um, we enable enterprises access to voice messaging, authentication services, which you know I'm responsible for. Um, which ultimately end up hitting, you know, the operator uh, networks, whether that's through traditional means or, you know, these new new flavor of APIs that are emerging. Great. Thanks, Lee. And last but not least, Eddie from Sush. I think everybody knows Eddie, but may, may not know <laughs> about Eddie's new exciting venture. So welcome, Eddie. Tell us about Good yourself, morning. even though I think we all know you, but uh, and then tell us about Sush. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, great to be here with a great panel. Um, so I'm Eddie DeCurtis. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Sush. What Sush is, is we're a network authentication monetization solution platform specifically focused on the supply side. So we deliver a full featured platform monetization solution for the mobile network operators to launch network um, attributes to the the, what we call the demand side partners, the centers of the world, the info bits of the world, the banks, the brands, et cetera. So we um, we deliver regardless if they have a, a, an, an API framework already installed in their network. This is the platform that actually makes it all work and makes it, you know, allows them to make money at no cost or no upfront cost to the mobile operator. So that's what we're doing at search. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Eddie. So welcome panelists. So I know all of you are implementing or using telco APIs today in your product and service offering. So I think um, the, the first thing I'd like to start off with just generically, how does this relate to uh, or impact the wholesale industry? Just, just generically, and then we can get into some of the details about some of the APIs. I'll start with, uh, with Lee. Well, I, th I think that's the first thing to say is the, the <laughs> APIs are not a new thing, right? We we see an injection of pace uh, and, and interest through Kamara and Open Gateway, uh, and that is a, a great thing. Um, but, you know, the industry has been trying to launch sort of similar services for the last sort of five years. Um, so I'd say I'm cautiously optimistic that Kamara and Open Gateway represent a positive change, but I think we're still struggling to see a meaningful impact in terms of money. Agreed. Yeah, and, and you're absolutely right. APIs, telco APIs are, are definitely not a new thing. They've been around for 10 plus, maybe more than that, 20, 15 years, right? And and there are some examples in some regions where there are proprietary solutions for identity, number verify, payments, uh, but that's the problem, right? They're proprietary. So I think what's new here in with Open Gateway, GSMA, Camara, TM Forum is standardization, right? So, you know, uh, from the last panel, right, the same language. So if, if we have a standardized set of APIs, um, then any developer can develop uh, in their app for these standardized APIs and know that it's going to work globally. Now, of course, you have to wait for implementation. But uh, as I mentioned, we, we have some good traction, some good momentum in implementation. Uh, still a lot of um, strides need to be taken to get that to be u ubiquitous as, as we see today with, with SMS, for example. But I think that's a good idea. I mean, I mean, a good example, SMS. Today, I can write some code on my phone and give it a list of 10 numbers and send a message out using SMS. That's technically an API, right? Just using SMS, which is an operator service uh, that you know Twilio famously uh, uh, brought uh, the whole uh, SMS uh, API to the fore in terms of uh, you know one of the original C passes and, and, and on the messaging side, right? I mean there are others, but you know large scale implementation. But they were, I mean, it's not really an API from an operator perspective in terms of exposing 
the internal structure of their network, right? Internal services. It's just it's an external, you know, publicly facing end user function that you could use, and that basically people came up with a hack. But it is an example of of how you can use the telco network to do things other than, you know, send a P two P short message, right? So, uh, but, think, but point well taken. I think that Ivan and I would both agree that uh, there are others. <laughs> Not just Twilio. <laughs> I mean, of course. Yeah. You should, you should just please, look at please, the please. founding. Uh, you should just look, Doug, at the founding years, and then you can order things. Please, please enlighten us. Um, uh, I mean, you uh, uh, re regarding your question on what uh, what the network APIs will do for uh, wholesales. Yeah, no, no, I was, I, I was kidding. Yeah, of course, um, you know the, I, I know the history of your, your companies too. So I, I should have included you in, in, in my example. But, um, you yeah, know, please, no please, yeah, let's. let's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, question to you about impact on wholesale, the wholesale market structure. Um, yeah. So I, I think there are kind of uh, two or three things. First of all, I have to agree with Lee. I think we're yet to see actually monetary impact. So as I said, um, we're kind of in an incubation phase. I think, you know, it, um, when this scales, um, I think that we'll see kind of two or three things. So number one, it'll prevent some of the revenue erosion or disruption that's starting to happen in SMS due to kind of other channel channels and all kind of things. Uh, I think the other thing is it'll actually help us um, extend uh, things we can do, right, in terms of use cases. Because, I mean, SMS is great, but it has its limitation. Now, if you have SMS, if you have RCS, you then get network APIs, you start to see permutation, you can build more use cases, more useful things uh, for business. And that will definitely increase, include the, increase the revenue potential, potential also margin, because some of these will be extremely high value areas. And then, um, the third thing is we'll have an option to uh, generate new business models, right? Because, I mean, there will be probably a long tail of network APIs that you won't charge by consumptions by, by, by something else um, because they'll be very valuable, but you will use them occasionally. So I think with all of this said, I think it's an, if we manage to scale, um, as Lee said, that really uh, sort of across other, um, you know, uh, uh, really activate a large number of telcos or at least major markets, um, when those APIs are exposed, I think this will be the business impact. So speaking of business impact, both both you and, and Lee agree that that monetization is is still an issue or still to come, right? And I think uh, I think Eddie, you might have some comments around monetization. Yeah, so there is an SMS problem, right? I think the initial like early in this year, you know, I think I heard the number with seven percent decline, three percent twenty twenty three, seven percent in 2024. I have talked to operators 30% OTP down completely. So telco APIs, mobile authentication, mobile identity, whatever you want to call it, whatever definition you want to use, is that fourth, you know, revenue stream for the carriers as they're losing revenue on um on the OTP traffic dropping, even though business messaging and marketing, et cetera, is, is continually growing. Where APIs is not just throw it over the fence, five-digit code, and you're good. It's actually you could build upon that first API of network um, of device uh, status or uh, you know network authentication whatever it is that it's that first entry point and then all of a sudden you're now asking for more hpi attributes which drives the value chain which moves up the value chain so you're saying is this number on the network okay has they done have they done a sim swap okay let's do a silent authentication so it's not a one and done it could be a multiple interaction between the network operator and the and the demand side partner right so the carriers we believe and we're confident in this in, in this study that it is true to form where you know mckenzie comes out and says it's a 300 billion dollar market juniper 900 billion dollars you know um i i, I gsma 10 10 x otp so there is a tremendous amount of revenue to tap into for the mobile network operators that puts them back in control 
of their subscriber information, right? Because there's only one place in the world you can get SIM swap information. Apple doesn't have it, Google doesn't have it. The only place in the world it exists is on the mobile network. It truly puts the carrier and the mobile network operators um, specifically in the center of this ecosystem, right? So this is why we believe, and we're confident behind it, that we believe by providing the supply side of it, getting those mobile network operators launched 90 days to revenue, opening up over 30 plus API attributes for companies such as Cinch and InfoBip and others that are out there, truly will drive the, the ecosystem forward and, and northward in the revenue uh, stream. Thanks, Eddie. Let me let me go to Cedric on this since uh, we do have an operator here in the room. Uh, Cedric, could you give us your perspective mm -hmm. on yeah, these APIs? Yeah, I'll, and... I'll perspective that definitely uh, what was already said is that it's a, it's a very um, real opportunity for carriers to improve their revenue and to monetize to better monetize their network by providing some value added uh, information around the con con beyond connectivity. But it's also a way to, to clean the market. Uh, today, the, there is a lot of uh, use cases who are relying on SMS, which is the same technology for multiple use cases with different value behind, because the NOTP has not the same value as the marketing campaign, but the cost of the SMS is exactly the same in both ways. And this market is full of fraud as well. So it could be bypass, could be uh, artificial inflated traffic we have seen recently, on the SMS market and especially the global SMS market. And working through API is a better, more secure way to deliver this kind of service with an appropriate API identified for any different use cases. So you can have a segmentation of the pricing. So it will definitely clean the market, being an opportunity for carriers to, to better monitor. What we are planning to do is first to provide APIs to let's say to replace the potentially the SMS for number verification, for instance. Number verification is a small basic services just to verify your number is the right one. And it's far better to get it through an API with a transparent user journey for the end user, rather than sending an SMS asking for a pin code back with potential fraud and uh, inflation of course on SMS. So for us, something like SIM verify or number verify is really a bootstrap to uh, the API adventures and what we will be able to provide on top of the API. Because after you can increase the value chain by SIM swap, by KYC match, by providing uh, geolocalization services, et cetera, et cetera. So starting by securing and replacing basic services we have today and then develop to the growth of new use cases developer will mm -hmm. definitely invent on top of that. So, so is it, I mean, is it realistic? Uh, I, I hear what you're saying. So start with the existing services and express APIs for a variety of reasons. Maybe it's ease of use, maybe it's more secure, maybe it's uh, easier to, to program in apps. Um, but it, it, do you, let's go to the panels here. I know, I know, Ivan, you have to drop early, so I'll go to you first. But is it realistic? You know, we're, we're all, we all see the market data, the SMS decline, the decline in OTP, uh, siphoning off in, in, uh, from OTTs. Do you believe that, that APIs can, can arrest this decline and maybe flatten out or even go, go into another growth phase? Yes. I do believe, but I mean, we need to sort out the supply side and get like enough big markets activated so it's attractive and we need to work with businesses to educate them. What, what can you do with this? I productize a little bit use cases because if you go to an average, yeah. I'm talking about enterprise buyer and you say network API, he's like network what? You know, so uh, you need to really explain like, okay, this is a different way to do authentication. This is a better way to do marketing. By the way, it's not just supply side it's also the compliance you know how we can actually for certain things um get the processes so there's a whole thing we've done for sms which we'll need to do here how do you you know get the access etc cetera, etc cetera. so when we build that ecosystem i i don't think it'll just prevent decline it'll actually drive growth because i mean apis are very scalable it's just more you know getting to that point that this is ready because at the moment there is many many issues <laughs> that are not yet resolved i mean we have some use cases in some markets like Brazil, 
that was the idea. Let's get one set of APIs so we can activate one use case. And even that one, to be honest to you, I mean, great, it's happening, but there's always discussion on the price. So even if you can do different things better, you know, for certain use cases, enterprise buyers will be sensitive on price. So we need to get the business model right as well, eventually. So, I mean, there is a couple of things on the road. Once this is ready, I believe in this, but you know, it's, it's, it's our, our responsibility and ecosystem to get this ready. So I, I guess what we're saying here is that it's not in wholesale, not about uh, new contracts, new functionality. Price is the main issue here. Um, either same price with more functionality or deliver with you know lower price but lower cost of delivery. Is that right? No, it's not just the price. It depends on the use case. But for some cases, they'll be very price sensitive. But my point was a little bit broader. There's a set of steps that we need to do as an ecosystem to get things on the go. And it's not just to your point, I agree with this plug and play, like this is another SMS. Like RCS will be easier once it's on because we already have everything worked out for an SMS world. This is just a big upgrade of it. I think for network APIs, we'll need to kind of go a little bit back and rebuild. So what's the compliance process? What network APIs do we have to have active for which use cases? How do we price these different use cases? Some will be super price sensitive. Others might not be. The third ones, you know, they don't want consumption pricing because let's take quality on demand for recording football matches on stadiums. You know, <laughs> you will use it only sometimes, but it's very valuable when you use it. So probably it's another model, maybe it's yeah. a subscription. So all of these things we need to work out that they're relatively complex. Once we have them ready, then the market will really scale. So that's what, what I just wanted to say, you know. Thanks, thanks, thanks for that. So Eddie, I know you have some comments here. Eddie, you're muted, maybe? Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, I thought you muted me. Um, yeah, so, you know, Avon is, Avon is correct, but then the beauty about well, network attributes and, and, and being able to expose them is, is being able to expose them holistically. So it doesn't have to be just a brand. It could be like, you know, George Fager made a great comment, who's also a partner with Search, is where we're providing the network attributes to his multi-factor authentication solution that he's working with larger fintechs etc so being able to broaden the ecosystem not just a single api call but actually giving these multi-factor solutions like covert security um so it will enable a more um a, a more secure robust offering that the financial services you know will pay for and the and the and the mobile network operators can experience that growth in, in, in revenue because you know if they seeing value the financial institutes and the brands will pay for it if they're throwing a two-factor message over the fence and praying that the person on the other side is that right individual that's the challenge, which is why you're seeing growth in email, for the love of God, email. You're seeing growth in email OTP. You're seeing growth in um, you know, WhatsApp OTP. You're seeing third-party uh, verification apps, such as Google Verify, et cetera, right? Where the true um, benefits will come from these network attributes and pulling them out directly from the mobile carrier and providing them to services like Cover, like an like a regular brand, uh, a banking app, et cetera. So that's where the industry has to move to, and I believe that's you know that's why we exist, you know, and to help the mobile operators get to that point. So I think we all have our, our favorite APIs, uh, or maybe list of APIs. Uh, I really like your quote. Cedric, number verify is the bootstrap to the API adventure. I guess we're going on an adventure here. Uh, hopefully a good adventure, positive adventure. Um, can you say more about that? Why, why, why do you believe that's um, you know, maybe your launching pad? And then I'll get the other panelists to, to chime in and, and agree or disagree with uh, where we should, where's the starting point? How do we launch this? How do we get critical mass? Yeah, the, the, the key uh, challenge we have is to be able to provide a service which is as ubiquitous and simple to use as SMS today, for instance. The success of SMS is that it's fully ubiquitous. You can get any users thanks to SMS because it's universal. API was 
apart from this today. So the best option is to start by having full countries available and to collaborate between carriers to have full country rich uh, API per API, little by little, and we will build this ecosystem year after year to be able to have a universality of API access to, to different operators, networks, and, uh, and different users. So it's a key challenge we are facing today. It's not developing an API. It's not so complicated to develop a thing of API or number verify. It's quite easy. The most complicated is to have the whole ecosystem following at the same speed to be able to provide a full access. Because a bank, for instance, if they want to check their end user, uh, let's say, identity, they cannot rely on one single operator in one country. They need full country coverage. So this is our main challenge we have today. And this is what we are working uh, on with uh, different operators and thanks to GSMA and different organizations to be sure that we are uh, moving at the same pace and uh, moving the whole ecosystem in the right way. So even I know you have to drop now. Um, any any last words from you from you before you need to go? Uh, on which question or just the overall? Uh, well, the same question, but I, I was about to move on. Um, but before I do, let's let's see if you have uh, your favorite APIs and what you believe the a good launch point would be. Well, I, I don't think I, I kind of agree. I don't think I have really a, a favorite one, but I think the good good the good launch plan is is sort of um, uh, having a target vision in mind and then building it kind of from simpler to more complex. So, for example, um, the authentication ones and the fraud ones are uh, for me a good place to start because it's an existing need, existing use case, but we can make them more sophisticated. And then um, as, as Eddie said earlier, you know that will be faster to scale a bit more known business model. And then we can start building more complex things as we go. Got it, thanks. Thanks, Ivan. And I'm excited what uh, we can do together. This is an ecosystem thing. So just as a concluding thought, looking forward. <laughs> To seeing the future and as and as cedric from orange says it's uh it's an adventure so lee i know you had some comments on uh, the cost yeah. side of things uh, uh, let me sort of answer the same last question as well so so i like um cedric's you know number verify being the foundation for you know the api adventure but you know i speculate that whilst that's useful as a philosophy is it actually true um you know, we've always seen the OTP kind of addressable market as the launch pad for number verify, and that's been true for the sort of last five years. But um, I think it would be fair to say it hasn't worked. Um, and what it's done is shine a light on a couple of challenges. One has been the sort of trust in the operator ecosystem because they've seen hyper enterprises have seen hyperinflation in SMS, so they their trust in telco apis has, has been contaminated by that but we've also seen this drag within the operator community because you know one business doesn't want to cannibalize the other you know ie number verify doesn't want to cannibalize sms and that's meant that we've been unable to reach the price point where you know enterprise wants to consume this stuff and you know my view of the market is customers are buying authentication services on price. So if we don't get that right, and we don't create the foundation layer for Cedric's big adventure. Um, so that that's probably my biggest headache that I'm trying to address. Eddie, further comments from you? Yeah, I think if you want to know my favorite, it's SimSwap. That's my favorite because the only place to get that data is the mobile network operator, period. End of discussion, not Apple, not Google. The only place is the mobile network operator. And secondly, the biggest scams have been caused by SimSwap. $190,000 for your wireless poor lady lost her entire life savings. The largest, the largest uh, cryptocurrency scams were done by SimSwap, $423 million. The regulators are fed up. The regulators are going to force the mobile network operators July 8th, the mobile network operators have to report to the FCC their policy to avoid SIM swap, right? Well, now there's policy. What's next is technology, okay? So in the U.S., there's well, only, everybody knows the three majors, right? Everybody knows the three mm -hmm. majors. There's still 60-plus operators 
that that don't have a technology solution. That's where Sish comes in, right? So having the ability to provide this SIM swap protection, and then and then it's imperative for the brands to actually start reading the data. So the woman who got uh, caught at Verizon from Bank of America, I know Verizon offers SIM swap. How come Bank of America didn't look, right? How come Bank of didn't take that attribute, right? So those are the challenges that the market still has, but SIM swap is a huge opportunity for the mobile network operators to provide AP, telco API attributes to the demand side. But we had, yeah, I think, I think you. Price. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yes. Lee. We have to be careful on price. We cannot charge yeah. enterprise. Agreed. Oh no, no, agreed. I'm 100% behind you on that. We had this conversation previously, but yeah, price is a. We have a pricing model. The beauty is, my chief product officer is John Morrow from T-Mobile. He built this at T-Mobile. He came up with a pricing structure that seemed to work beautifully. So you know working with the mobile network operators is, is imperative for at least us to educate them to say you can't over you can't charge four times what you're charging for OTP for this they're not going to you know it, 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 that's the challenge so education and working with them and proving out a model for them where they're going to make ex substantially greater increases in revenue is 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 one of our most important jobs Thanks for that, Eddie. Uh, you know, I think I think you might be in the minority with your very favorable view of regulation, but maybe that's a, more of a U.S. thing. Um, hey, hey, so. dude, dude, dude! I never, in my thirty years, in my thirty years of career in telco, and I've done everything. I couldn't stand the regulators. In my career today, I love them because they're forcing the ecosystem to move to telco APIs. Right now, I'm a big supporter. But if you asked me this eight months ago, I would be like, "Oh, I hate the regulator." But yeah. So, uh, panelists, unfortunately, we're we're right at time now. So, I would like to give the final comments to Cedric, since it's Cedric's new adventure. Uh, I think that quote is going to stick now in industry. So, uh, API adventure. Final final thoughts here, Cedric. So, thank you. I think we we said a lot all together. Uh, I fully agree that uh, carriers has to be cautious regarding the pricing and not to believe that they will uh, they can overcharge. It's by having something reasonable and uh, really sticking to the real value of the services behind that we will have a development of this business. And definitely, uh, the growth will come by um, multiplying the use cases far beyond simple authentication and SIM swap and by providing new added, uh, added value services that we will take the growth, not by overcharging the single and basic services. And uh, I count on every uh, carrier to join us in these uh, adventures and to build it together with uh, all the different partners around. Well, exciting times, everyone. Thanks to the panelists here. Uh, I think we're all in for a, a great adventure. And yes, we did cover a lot of ground uh, in this panel session, uh, but you can see we just scratched the surface. So I think uh, look forward to more content at uh, future MEF events for mobile revolution and mobile KPIs. Uh, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much, a big thank you, you from my side as well. It was the last panel of the day, but what a panel! And it's um, certainly uh, the the premise of a lot of a lot more conversations to come in this particular domain. So uh, uh, we've we've uh, th thank you for setting the scene, and I'm sure we'll hear more from you guys uh, in the working groups of uh, of Doug, but also in that kind of uh, uh, in that kind of uh, opportunity. So um, thank you for enlightening us on, on this uh, API topic. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone.